In this tutorial, we'll be going over everything you need to know about working with gradients in Inkscape. Now in this lesson, we're going to focus on linear and radial gradients in particular, but if you want to learn about some of the more advanced types of gradients in Inkscape, such as mesh gradients and conical gradients, I have a separate tutorial for that that I'll have linked in the description below. So to start us off here, a gradient is basically a transition between two or more colors, and a good example of that would be this sunset graphic. In the background, this sky does not have a single color applied to it. It has a gradient applied to it where it transitions from lavender to this peach sort of shade. So let me show you how this can be accomplished in Inkscape. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and I'm going to click and drag on the canvas to draw a rectangle. And then I'm going to open up my fill and stroke menu by coming down here to this color stripe and double clicking it. When I do that, the fill and stroke menu will open up over here on the right hand side of the screen. And under the fill tab, you'll notice we have these different types of fills that we can apply to an object. Right now we have a solid color applied to the object, but if we wanted to apply a, a gradient, we can choose one of these options over here. We have a linear gradient, which follows a linear or straight path. And then we have a radial gradient, which follows a circular or round path. So let me select linear gradient. And when I do that, you can see that by default, the gradient that it applies starts off with the original color on the left-hand side, and then it transitions over to transparency on the right-hand side. Now I'm gonna grab my gradient tool from the toolbar over here. You can also access it by pressing the letter G on your keyboard. And if I click on this handle, you can see the color that's applied to this part of the gradient over here in the fill and stroke menu. You can see the color code, you can see the HSL values, and then you can see the colors indexed over here in the stops menu. Now, if I click on the other end of this gradient, you can see now I have the other color selected. Now this is the same color, but the alpha channel is brought all the way down. And by the way, if you don't have an alpha channel here, make sure to come up here to this dropdown and choose HSL from this list. Now I'm gonna bring the opacity of this end of the gradient all the way up. So I'm gonna change the alpha channel to hundred and I'll press enter. And I'm gonna give this a different color. So I'm gonna click on this side of the gradient to select it. And I'll choose a different color from my color palette down here. Now, by the way, you don't have to use the color palette. If you want, you can change the color using the color wheel or the HSL sliders. And once you've chosen your colors, you can take these ends of the gradients and move them around if you'd like. You can just click and drag them like that and you can move them as if they were any other object. In fact, if you hold the control key, it'll lock it onto 15 degree increments so that you can get a perfectly straight gradient that either goes vertically or horizontally. So let me move this back over a little bit. Now, if you come up here to the top of the menu, you can see we have some controls in here. Let's say I wanted to reverse this gradient. I can click on that button and it flips the gradient around so that yellow is on the left-hand side and pink is on the right. And I'm gonna flip it back and it gets the same effect. And then over here we have repeat. As of right now, there is no repeat applied to this gradient. So the default is none. But if I were to change this to a direct repeat, you can see what happens here when the gradient ends, it just starts and stops abruptly and opens up a new one. And this goes infinitely. So let me put this back. And then the other option is reflected. So I'll choose reflected. And this repeats the gradient as well, but it just mirrors it each time. So it's a little bit of a softer transition. So let me set this back to none. I'm gonna move my stops out a little bit. And let's say I wanted to add a new color to this gradient. To do that, all I have to do is double click anywhere on the path with the gradient tool. So I'll double click right here and it'll add a new stop to that gradient. And if you look over here in your stops index, you can see all of the colors that are included in this gradient. And we now have that one in the middle that was just added. And if you click on that one to select it, you can change the color of that as well. So I'll make this something radically different like green, just to show you. And you can see we now have a gradient that transitions from pink to green to yellow. And I could take these stops and move them around as needed. And this works infinitely. You can keep adding new stops in here if you want to, to add new parts to the gradient. And if you want to remove them, all you have to do is just press the delete key. So I'll press delete to delete that one. I'll click on that one to select it, press delete, and then I'll do the same thing over here. And then we're back to our original gradient. And by the way, it works the same thing over here in this menu. You can select these stops just by clicking on these colors in the stops index. And another thing you can do is if you want to offset your gradient so that one color is more dominant than the other, you can use this slider up here. 
So let's say I wanted more pink in this gradient. I could take this slider and just bring this over and then it becomes more pink dominant. And it works the other way in reverse as well. I can take the yellow slider and bring that over. And there you go. Now there's more yellow in the gradient. So now let's have a look at an example of when linear gradients would come in handy. Getting back to my original example of the sunset, right now the sky just has a single color applied to it. But if I wanted to make this look more like a realistic sunset, I would apply a linear gradient to it. So I'm going to click on the object to select it, and then I'll open up my fill and stroke menu. I'll apply a linear gradient, and I'm going to grab my gradients tool, and I'm gonna select this end of the gradient, and instead of letting this be transparent, I'm gonna make this a purple shade. So another way that you can apply colors to your gradient is with the dropper tool. So with this end of the gradient selected, I will press D on my keyboard to grab my color selector, and then I'm gonna sample this color right here just to make it that shade of purple. And then I'll grab my gradient tool, and I'll take this stop and bring this up here. And then I'll take this one and bring this down. And again, holding control on my keyboard so that it remains a perfectly vertical path. And there you go. Just like that, I was able to use linear gradients to make this sunset look more realistic. Now let's have a look at how radial gradients work. I'm going to grab my circles and ellipses tool and I'll hold control and click and drag to create a circle. And now I'm going to apply a gradient to it, but instead of using a linear gradient, this time I'm going to use a radial gradient. And when I click on that, you can see what happens here. Uh, if I grab my gradient tool, you can see that this works almost the same way, but the only difference is that the gradient is now following a round path instead of a linear path. And I could take these handles and bring them in like this. And if I do that, you can see it distorts the gradient. But if I want to maintain the aspect ratio while scaling, what I would do is I would hold the control key or control and shift rather, and it scales both at the same time. Let me try that again though, since I already distorted it. The key is that you want to hold control and shift before you click and drag. So I'll hold control and shift and then I'll click and drag. And now it scales it with the aspect ratio preserved. And again, this works the same way. If you want to add new colors in here, you could just double click the path. And with that node selected, you can click on a different color and then it adds that color to the gradient. So let me undo that. Let me undo adding the new stop to the gradient. And I'm going to reverse this gradient up here. I'm going to click on this option that says reverse the direction of the gradient. And I'm going to select this option in the middle and I'm going to bring the alpha channel up to 100. And I'll make this one white, so I'll bring this up to 100 as well, so that it's all white. And then I'll take this end of the gradient, and I'll move this up and to the right like that. And then I'll change the offset of this gradient by adding more white to it. So I'll take this handle and bring this out a little bit. And I'll scale this out some more. I'm going to hold Control and Shift and scale up. And as you can see, we were able to use the radial gradients to create this simulated, uh, I guess you can say it sort of looks like a sphere or like a three-dimensional round object. So now let's go over an example of when radial gradients come in handy. I'm going to use radial gradients to create a vignette effect over this graphic here. So let me grab my rectangle tool and I'll click and drag over the graphic to draw a rectangle that covers the graphic entirely. And let me get rid of that stroke by holding shift and clicking the X. And I'm going to make this all white. And now I'm going to apply a radial gradient to it. I'm going to reverse the gradient so that transparency is on the inside and white is on the outside. And then I'll scale the gradient down so that the boundaries of it stay or the ends of it stay within the boundary of the image. And now I'm going to add more to the, I'm going to set an offset favoring the transparent side of the gradient. So I'll bring that up a little bit so that you can see more of the image. And if I zoom out, you can see what we were able to accomplish with that there. We created this vignette effect where it looks like the edges of the graphic have been softened and faded out. So that is how you can go about working with linear and radial gradients in Inkscape. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you wanna check that out. As always, thanks for watching.